Um, we're going to continue our review videos by talking a little bit about gravity and the things you need to know for gravity on the AP test, the things that they tend to ask a lot of questions about. So <clears throat> the first thing really to remember um, about gravity before we get into formulas and calculations are Kepler's three laws. First one being that all planets move in ellipses. with the sun at a focus. Or if we're talking about the Earth and the Moon, that the, Earth, the Moon moves in an ellipse with the Earth at a focus, or that a satellite going around a planet moves in an elliptical path with <clears throat> that planet at the focus. Two is the law of areas. Planet cover, covers equal area. in equal time. And the third one is the harmonic law where we have t squared over r cubed equals t squared over r cubed. So this ratio of period squared per average orbital radius cubed is the same for any object orbiting the same body. So all of the planets share this same ratio. It's constant for all the planets. The moon and any satellites going around Earth share this same ratio. So <clears throat> the thing that's important to remember about these is, is what, they, what they did. This one led to Newton's synthesis. This is how we got Newton's universal gravitation. So with, with Newton's synthesis, what we have is... Um, Okay, so what we do with Newton's synthesis is he takes um, <clears throat> he takes the idea that um, well the sum of the forces acting on let's say the Earth are equal to the mass of the Earth times its acceleration and that's equal to some force of gravity <clears throat> and so um, mass times the velocity of the Earth squared divided by the radius is equal to the force of gravity and when he came up with the force of gravity it had to fit in such a way that this came out to be a constant and so if we take the velocity and this is an important relationship that's going to come up all the way throughout your physics test that the velocity of this thing going around in its orbit is 2 pi r the distance that it travels in one revolution at the circumference of its of its circular path divided by the period and we plug that in we've got m times 4 pi um, times the radius of the orbit squared pi squared times the radius of the orbit squared divided by the period again squared times that radius is equal to the force of gravity. The force of gravity has to be constructed in such a way that it's going to give us the correct ratio. So one of these r's go away and I have to have t squared over here and in order to get r cubed overall I've got to have an r squared relationship um, and then Newton theorized that it had something to do with the mass of each object involved. So um, really this gave us Newton's synthesis and primarily the idea that it was a 1 over r squared type of force which we see everywhere and then equal area in equal time was proven with the invention of calculus and the use of angular momentum. very popular problem with angular momentum that doesn't actually mention equal areas and equal time is to take the elliptical orbit of a planet around a sun um, name things this distance being A this distance being B uh, and looking at the velocity at A and the velocity at B. Uh, a common type of question that we see on free response with this at least is to say okay the angular momentum at A is equal to the mass of the satellite times the velocity at A times 
again, that's its distance. If that's at a right angle, it's just going to be mv times a. And as we we already talked about that in another video, that's the angular momentum at a. The angular momentum at b is the mass times the velocity at b uh, times that distance b. <clears throat> and in a planetary system. angular momentum is conserved. Um, looking at, let's say, B as my radius, that's the direction that the radius points. <laughs> Gravity is parallel to that, which means gravity is not a torque. So when we look at it, angular momentum of A equals angular momentum of B. So that velocity B, if we wanted to solve for that, our M's cross out. The velocity B is VA times the ratio of A over B. Uh, and that's how we can figure that out without having to do conservation of energy. This is a much simpler way to look at finding those velocities. Uh, and then the last one has to do with um, injection velocity for circular orbit. Circular orbit is a special kind of ellipse. So let's see, this is our planet and the goal is to have a circular orbit around that planet. Well, if we inject here and we're going too fast, the shape of our orbit is an ellipse where we're at the same position. We just slingshot out a little bit farther. And, and again, our planet has to stay at a focus. Or if <clears throat> we're too slow, again, it's an ellipse, but that's our far point where we have the most energy. and, and, and we're still at the focus, and that's just the close point. So it's two different ellipses, but it's going to be always an ellipse. If we don't have the exact right speed to be in a circle, it's an ellipse. It's just how that ellipse looks. It's not going to look like this. It's not going to have this same shape because the, the planet always has to be at a focus. So um, those are our basics with gravity. Then we get into um, using Newton's law of universal gravitation. So. Newton's law of universal gravitation is equal to negative g times the mass of one object divided by the mass of the other object divided by their radius squared, where g um, is the gravitational constant found using a torsion balance by Henry Cavendish. And whenever Henry Cavendish did it, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meters squared per kilograms squared. All it is is a constant to make everything proportional, but it makes it very tiny. <clears throat> so the things that we can do with this, um, acceleration due to gravity g is just the acceleration due to gravity. And if that's going to be the force of gravity divided by the mass of whatever little object we're talking about. And so it's just g times the mass of the big object divided by the radius of the little object squared. Um, this is the type of thing where they ask you, okay, we're going to go to a planet that has three times the mass of the Earth and twice its radius. What's the acceleration due to gravity on this planet compared to the Earth? We've also seen problems where it says, okay, we're going to change these things. Um, again, the mass and the radius, and how does that affect escape velocity or uh, the velocity of an object in orbit? It's important to, um, okay, so continuing to work with this for a circular orbital velocity, for circular orbital velocity, we're going to say that the mass times the centripetal acceleration of an object, because it's in a circular orbit, is equal to the force of gravity. So if we want that um, velocity, it's mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius of the object. That's equal to g times the mass of the big object times the mass of the satellite divided by the radius squared. 
r's cross out, m's cross out, and so this orbital velocity is given as the square root of gm over r. That is the velocity for perfect circular orbit. This is the only time really that we're going to be able to use um, forces to find velocity. Okay. But, <coughs> pardon, it's good knowing um, again how to manipulate these things without actually changing um, putting numbers in just to change the values. It's a multiple choice kind of thing. Double the mass, half the radius, what's that going to do? Eight times the acceleration due to gravity or eight times the weight of the object. Now, the next place we take this is potential energy. Potential energy for gravity is just going to be the negative integral of f dot dr. Now when you do that, our potential energy for gravity comes out to be negative gmm just over all. <clears throat> so when we look at the total energy of an object in circular orbit, it's going to be kinetic energy plus potential energy. So we'll say circular orbit. I don't want to write that again, but for the total energy in circular orbit, it's kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So that total energy is one half the mass of the satellite times its velocity squared minus g times the mass of uh, the planet it's going around times the mass of the satellite divided by the radius. We plug everything in. We see that our total energy is uh, one half gmm over r minus gmm over r, and our total energy comes out to be in circular orbit negative one half gmm over r. That's the idea of a negative bound energy for total energy. So when we get to the spot where the total energy is equal to zero, that is escape velocity. And we can use the idea of conservation of energy, if that's at point one and point two, um, point one and point one, to find the same two values, point two, point two, at two different points. So we can drop an object to the surface of a planet. It is important to know that when using this, potential is only equal to zero at infinity, not a planet surface. With, with gravitational potential energy, we're tempted to think that, but when we're talking in terms of this GMM over R thing, we cannot say that the potential is equal to zero at a planet's surface. The only place it's equal to zero is infinity. So, um, that's all we have for uh, that's all we have for gravity.